Now let's continue on with day two of the Feast of Tabernacles and come to Genesis, the third chapter. Now before we get into it, there are certain things that we know that we don't know. We know this, that God lived in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden. Obviously, God had his place, and Adam and Eve had their place. How long they lived that way, before we come to chapter 3, we don't know. But we do know this, that God never subjects a person to the trial that they went through here without knowledge of the truth first. Now, this didn't mean that they received the full knowledge of God's plan and everything like that. No, they didn't. but they were certainly taught the law of God. And whatever God commanded them to do was the law. So before the serpent, Satan the devil, God let him come into the Garden of Eden to test Adam and Eve. Now, since God gives free moral agency, we need to have some circumstances to, to substantiate and prove that we will choose what is right and do what is right. Because there is good and there is evil. And there is right and there is wrong. Now then, we can see from the generation that we're living in today, when you have a generation that is not taught right from wrong, good from evil, and that they are taught to love themselves, and each individual becomes an entity unto himself, in other words, he becomes, in his own mind, God, because he decides what's right and wrong and what is good and evil. See? Now we will see that's exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. Okay? So God would not let the serpent in there until they had full knowledge. Now, the point is this. It doesn't matter how long the time was. It matters what did they choose. You know, just like our own children growing up, we tell them, don't do that. Now, if they don't do that, then everything is well. But if they do that and they get themselves in trouble, then what happens? Everything becomes a fight. And then discipline must come for the infraction of what was done. Now that's a basic common tenet that we find in everything because God is the one who has established right and wrong and good and evil. Okay. But he is the one to decide what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's evil. So therefore, what is good, he made it his law to do. What is evil is to not obey his law. Now, the three words we need to remember through all this episode is obey my 
voice. Okay? And as we go through and see this in the survey of what we're going to do, a dwelling place of God. So here we are. Dwelling place of God, and God appeared to Adam and Eve pretty much like a human being. Because we find later on, when God was talking to Moses, and Moses was pleading with God to see his glory, he says, no man can see my face and live. That is, no one can see God in his glory and live. Now, if God reduces himself down to appearing as a human being, then you can talk with God. He can talk with you, and that's what we have with Adam and Eve. So let's pick it up, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true? Now why did he pick on the woman? Okay. We don't know. Well, she was there. And we will see. Adam could have stopped the whole thing, but didn't. All right? Is it true that God has said? Now, you challenge God. You shall not eat of any of the trees of the garden. Making a false statement. Now, if you know right from wrong, good from evil, when you hear something false, what do you do? You correct it. So let's read it. Which Eve did. And the woman said to the serpent, we may freely eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, the phrase there, lest you touch it, okay, that was probably additional instruction from God. Some have said, well, Eve added that to it. We have no substantiation that that was true. God told him. Okay. Now then, evil always has a comeback. So if you're not prepared, and if you're not grounded, you can easily get trapped, which is what happened to Eve. Verse 4, and the serpent said to the woman, in dying you shall not surely die. Okay. For God knows. Now he's accusing God. And he's saying God is hiding something from you that you need to know. See? So this tells us when anyone brings up any accusation against the word of God. Be careful, because you can get yourself in trouble. For God knows that in a day you eat of it, your eyes shall be open. Everyone wants new knowledge. Everyone wants the secret thing known. Don't they? Yes. Yes. And you shall be like God. Now, oh, see, now God appeared to them more like a human being. See. So wasn't it you be like God in glory and power and things like this? You'll be like God deciding good and evil. In other words, Instead of following the commands of God and the rules of God, you make your own rules. And you decide what is good and evil. 
Now look what has happened to the world since that time because of that very same thing that goes here. And nothing has changed. We'll see that in a little bit. So, she was curious. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. Now nothing happened to her. She also gave to her husband with her, so there he was right there with her, and he ate. Now then, it shows this. Whenever the head of the family sees something wrong that should not be, he should not go along with it. And that carries all the way down in time, all the way down through everything of history that we know. Okay? And he ate. And the eyes of both of them were opened to see evil and closed to see good. And they knew that they were naked. Now everything involved of what caused this to be this way, we don't know. The only way we can have some understanding of it is, look at this generation that we have today that believes that anything with sex goes. Well, that's not true. It's not true today, and it wasn't true back then. So we don't know what happened. But we do know that Satan always always perverts sex. And what he's done today is what he probably did back then. And they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Okay? Whenever you do something wrong, you always try and cover your bases, right? Here it was, cover their nakedness. All right? Did that do away with what they did? No. Did that change the circumstances of what they were in? No. But the eating of the fruit changed the circumstances. And God knew. Okay? And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay? Now that means God was coming from where his abode was in the garden, down to them. And he knew what they had done. Obviously, he knew. Then Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Now, we know this. Nothing can be hidden from God. Okay? Nothing. Every secret's going to be known, shouted from the housetop, exposed to show the ignominy of their sin. So God knew. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Because oh, they were hiding. You know, you can't hide from God. You can never, never hide from God. And everything you do is recorded on the spirit of man that you have. So God knows anyway, right? Okay. And he said, that is Adam did, I heard you walking in the garden and I was afraid because I am naked, so I hid my soul. So God said, who told you you were naked? 
and you might add in there and befraid. Okay. Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? He wanted to find out if Adam would tell the truth. Now what happens when you get caught and you, you don't want to admit that you did it or that you were responsible? What does human nature all, always do? And what does Satan always cause people to do? To blame someone else. But the truth is, each one of us, from Adam and Eve down all human beings, were responsible for our own choices and decisions. Okay? He didn't say, well, I ate of it because I was weak. Well, he didn't say that. Let's see what he said. So since he didn't answer the question, God asked him, Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Okay. And the man said, The woman whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The question is, Adam, why didn't you refuse? You could have. But you didn't. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? Now, she wasn't willing to admit what she did. And she said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And that was true. She was deceived. So, here comes the judgment of God. Every sin requires a judgment. And there is a penalty. Okay? And in this case, this was so profoundly important that it affected all of mankind down through all history to this very day and beyond. Now think of that. That's why it's important we understand this. How do you think the church got taken down internally? Because men did things they knew weren't right. And God had to bring a penalty and punishment upon them. Okay? And just like Adam and Eve were thrust out of the Garden of Eden, God took away many times down through history the church because of sin. Which came from where? Satan, the devil. So that's why this is important. See? Now then, God brings his judgment, beginning with a serpent. And his judgment is, we'll find out when we get toward the end of the Feast of Tabernacles and the last great day that the final punishment of Satan will be known. This is the beginning of it right here. Verse 14, And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all livestock, above every animal of the field, and you shall go on your belly, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between you and your seed and her seed. And that is true. There's always been an aversion of serpents and snakes by human beings. 
Now, for those who are Satan lovers, they love and embrace snakes. Huh? Quite a thing. Okay? Between your seed and her seed, and that's a prophecy of what? Jesus Christ. So now, this projects all the way forward 4,000 years. So that's why these early chapters of the Bible are important. Okay? And who was it that actually killed Christ? Was it not Satan? Yes, indeed, it was. And when he did, he thought he had won. But Christ was raised from the dead because God's plan is going forward and going to work out for the best for everyone. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And that's a sign of the crucifixion. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your sorrow and your conception. Okay? So this is why mothers need to be especially alert and strong and loving and teaching their children from infancy on up what is right. If you don't you can have enough sorrow and pain when the child is born. And you can have enough sorrow and difficulties in them growing up. But if you don't correct them and if you don't teach them, you're going to have sorrow and misery just like this generation that we have today. Okay? And sorrow shall you bring forth children. Your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. Okay? The husband is the head of the wife. That's the way God made it. And to Adam he said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife instead of to me, to obey my voice, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, the ground is cursed for your sake and in sorrow. So women are going to have sorrow. Men are going to have sorrow. Okay. Shall you eat of it all the days of your life? Now, we'll see how long they lived here in just a minute. And it shall also bring forth thorns and thistles to you, and thus shall you eat the herbs of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, and dust you are, and in the dust you shall return. Okay. Now come over here to chapter 5. Chapter 5. Let's see how long, it doesn't tell us how long Eve lived, but it tells us how long Adam lived. Let's pick it up in verse 1, Genesis 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. He made man in the likeness of God. And he created them male and female and blessed them and called their name Adam, Mr. and Mrs. Adam in the day when he had created them. Now, he doesn't need to repeat the sins here because they're over in chapter 3. And Adam lived 135 years and begat a son of his own likeness and after his own image, and he called his name Seth. So the death of Abel was when they were 135 years old. Now that's a long time. And think about what everything that 
may have gone on in that 135 years. We're not told it. But the main thrust of everything we find in chapter 4. Okay? Now, before we get to chapter 4, let's finish off chapter 3. Verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living, all the children. Now, how many children they had? Well, the best we know of it is what Josephus wrote in his history of the people of Israel that they had 56 children. Now then, at that time, since all the genes were variant, then what God undoubtedly did was this. He would cause whatever race or color of the children to be born, he would cause the male and female to be born. And then they would marry. And so that's how he established all the races of people and why Adam and Eve probably had 56 children. Okay. Now we can only surmise that. We can't actually prove it. But it had to be something like that. Okay. Now verse 21, chapter 3. And for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made coats of skins and clothed them. Now, that may have been made from goats, and that may have been a sin offering for what they had done. Now then, they were mostly cut off from God from that time forward. Before that, they lived in the Garden of Eden and had access to God every day. After that, here's what God did. And the Lord God said, Behold, man has become like one of us to decide good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, even to this day, we don't completely understand this verse. But we know that when we get to New Jerusalem, and we know that there's going to be the tree of life. Huh. Okay. How does that work as a spirit being? Well, God hasn't told us. Because we have enough to take care of our lives right now than to know what that's going to be. So we'll know what it will be at the time. Therefore, the Lord sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken, and he drove out the man and placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Now, I'll just give you a little hint of everything. The whole layout of the tabernacle and temple of God is based upon the Garden of Eden and the East Gate. Okay? Now that's a separate topic all in itself. Now let's come forward to chapter 4. And chapter 4 tells us that they knew of laws of God. And so... God probably met Adam and Eve outside of the gate of the Garden of Eden to teach them various things of what they needed to know. And they also had a sacrificial system which probably began with the two goats that were undoubtedly used to make their 
coverings after they had sinned. Chapter 4 and verse 1, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord, because of the prophecy that was given after they had sinned. And she thought, oh, here's the one that God promised. But it wasn't. And she bore again his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. There's nothing wrong with being a tiller of the ground. There were certain laws about animals and animal sacrifice and tithing and firstlings that we see given to the children of Israel. So he probably gave the same laws back here. We're not told because we don't need to take up the whole Bible for that information. We can rightly deduce it from what God gave to the children of Israel. Now, what were the laws concerning what was grown in the ground? The laws given to Israel, you would bring the first of the first fruits, the very first ripe, you would bring an offer to God. Okay? Give it to the priest. Then, of what the crop would produce, 10% would also go to God. So that's what we find with the children of Israel. Now, so when Cain, we'll see in a bit, did not do what was right, he had to break a law of God concerning what he should have brought, but he decided to bring whatever he wanted. Okay, now remember a principle from this. Whenever we decide that we do what we think is right in place of what God says is right, we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So let's read it. Verse 3. And it came to pass that Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Okay. And Cain also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat of it. So it shows the law of the firstlings and the offerings, right? And the Lord had regard unto Abel and his offering. Why? Because he did it according to the command of God. But he did not regard Cain and his offering, and Cain was extremely angry, and his countenance fell. Okay? Now notice what happened. God was right there, wherever the offering was, and Cain became jealous of Abel because God accepted his offering, but refused Cain's offering. Huh. Now, question, because you sin, because God says it's not right, and you get angry, does that make it right? Now, what are you supposed to do when you sin? Repent. Now, things would have been entirely different if Cain would have repented and corrected and brought the right offering of the ground. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry, and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, or that is correctly, shall you not be accepted? But of course. But if you do not well, sin lies at the door. Now, that's an interesting statement. Let's examine that a minute. Okay. Sin is what? 
1 John 3, 4, transgression of the law. There was a law here because there couldn't be sin without a law. Where there is no law, there is no sin. Okay? So the law was in effect. Now then, this also shows that those who claim there was no law from Adam and Eve until the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, they're completely wrong. And we'll see that again a little later. Completely wrong. Because God cannot bring a punishment if there is not a law. If you do not well, sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it, showing that every human being, when they sin, must overcome it. And that starts with what? Repentance. We have to rule over our own minds, over our own emotions, over our own feelings. But Cain did not do it. Verse 8, And Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel, and killed him. Okay. Now, isn't that the way that those dedicated to evil always do? They come after those who are righteous to get rid of them. And that's what we're seeing today. This woke movement is a religion. And they want to enforce it on everyone else. And who is the power behind it? Satan the devil. That's right. Continuing on. And the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Of course you are. See? And he, the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now then, why? Did it do that? Because God knew where the blood was shed and the life is in the blood and the life was fleeting out and in a sense crying out to God. Because Cain did not repent. Here's something else that happens and we can see it in the world today. There are some countries that are just absolutely cursed because of their civilization, because of their religion, because of their laws, because of the way that they live, and the ground is cursed. So let's read it. Verse 11, Now you are cursed from the earth, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. And you shall be a wanderer and a fugitive upon the earth. Nomad, going from place to place, staying for however long the few resources would last. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Oh, yes, those who perpetrate terrible crimes don't like the punishment coming upon them. Well, 
Let's see. Behold, you have driven me out from the face of the earth today. He could no longer come to the east end of the Garden of Eden to meet with God. He was driven out. And I shall be hidden from your face. And I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. And it shall be that anyone who finds me shall kill me. Oh, poor little baby. Well, the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, revenge shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain so that anyone who found him should not kill him. Now, what was the mark? We don't know. Now, we can guess. Okay, so I'll ring the bell. We'll guess. Was it a cross? Huh. Interesting. But everyone would see it, right? They would know this is Cain. He killed his brother Abel. Huh. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and lived in Node to the east of Eden. Clear away. Now, Cain had a wife. Okay. He knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Okay. So he built a city instead of wandering. Okay. Again. Now, we won't get into any more of this today. We'll continue tomorrow, see? But all of this has to do a dwelling place of God. Because God wants to be with his people. But people don't want to be with God, who gives them his law. So I want you to think on that and see what it is that today is a curse and a bane upon the people of America in a religious sense of the same pattern that we have here, that they make their own rules and regulations and claim they're from God. And they're not. So we'll see you tomorrow. So have the good rest of the day and the evening.